You know what I'm saying? I'm not even. I don't even do all that. I talk about sports, basketball, things I like. I hold conversation with everybody. I don't run in the back. Right. Some pass you can't get it to them. They got five members, and none of the five can get to them. I see them, especially in Chicago. I see churches like that. They got minimal members, but they got an entourage. So you got one of the five. You got to stand at the back door to make sure nobody gets to them. Uh -huh. yeah. Another one starts the car. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Get away. And then other. <laughs> hey, let me stop. But these are some of the things that we, you know what I'm saying? So I don't want these things to be in existence here, but this is some of the things we've somehow been exposed to. The imprisonment. Where it creates an environment where the Holy Spirit is not honored. We need to honor the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not some entity that just, just all of a sudden falls in the service. He has a deposit. He has gifts. He has graces. He has anointing within people. And the only way we can extract that is through relationship. I know most of the people here wants me to try to bring them up on the altar and call out what their gift is. Can you help us all out? <laughs> what do you have? You know what I'm saying? Let me know what you got. What you, what you know? If you want to sing, let me know you want to be on a worship team. Mm -hmm. Some folks want you. To, uh, uh. <laughs> now I understand the fivefold ministry is a whole different thing. Yes. <clears throat> but there are some body ministries like in uh, Romans, 8, I think Romans 12. Good. It gives you some ministry of the body. Mm -hmm. So there are some body ministry that all, everybody has. Mm -hmm. Remember, the Holy Spirit gives severally as He wills. Mm -hmm. Even the Doma gifts over in 1 Corinthians 12. Right? Yep. So that's, that's, and when you get a covenant, that's what happens. You offer stuff. You don't have to try to discern stuff. I hate discerning stuff. Nothing draws my heart. I put a, blank, a wet blanket on my heart if I got to ask you for stuff. If you got an offer to us. I know they go where. It's true. And you wonder why you're intimidated. Uh, and three, so a religious spirit, it infiltrates churches. So it not only does it imprison and intimidates uh, the people, the certain mindset, but it infiltrates the church, which means it penetrates our minds to create doubt. It starts telling you, making you subjective to the central voice. It, it starts telling you that only one who can hear the church is the five who ministry give. Mm -hmm. that's, mo that's the Mosaic system. Mm -hmm. That's the Old Testament. In the New Testament, mm -hmm. priesthood, priesthood of believers. Mm -hmm. That's why I told you guys, a body of believers being built up a habitation of God through His Spirit, that they may declare His glory in the earth. That's what He gave me from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I knew that it was going to be inclusive. I knew exclu being exclusive was not the problem. I know it wasn't going to be a elite group. And of course, I've been trying to do what I can to try to invoke people to some type of activity so they can participate. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. I've created, we've had how many impartation services? We've had all type of impartation services, yeah. prophetic training, yeah. activations, and everything. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And so I've done what I needed to do as a teacher. I can only open the door. You know, the Irish pro proverb says, you know, if you teach you to open the door, you got to walk through it. Right, right. So you got to have that <coughs> initiative. I can be as gratuitous as I want to, gracious as I'm possible, but it's ultimately up to you. Mm -hmm. So these mindsets wants to imprison us. It wants to intimidate us. It wants to infiltrate how we think. It wants to create doubt. It wants to cause us to come to a point where we got to de depend on a certain sector in the church. But it also wants to isolate you. So these next six things I'm going to talk about, it comes under this caption. So everything, some of the things I'm going to share, you're going to know. You're going to say, man, that's, that's imprisonment. Oh, wow. That's, 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 that's intimidation. That's infiltration. That's how, or that means to be isolated. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that come to, to kind of contaminate God's expression mm -hmm. on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I want 
no parts of it. I don't want to be contaminated. I want there to be a level of purity yes, that comes from my relationship with God, yeah, my relationship as it relates to the body, so that we can fulfill it the way God wants it to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And men that stood in the pulpit with these intentions. So you can go to those, uh, uh, I call them Laban ministries, mm -hmm. that, that order of Pharaoh ministries, that want you to build something that represents them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, we build something together that represents us. Yeah. 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 What we have. That's why you hear me when I post on page. I don't have me. I have us. Our. It's a. It's a. The pronouns is plural. Right. Even though I'm bringing the message, I always make sure yeah. you're connected. If you read it, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. we are a collective group. But these thoughts want to keep us locked in so that we can participate in the greater glory. Mm -hmm. And so somehow I gotta dissect these four principles and I have to show us and give us keys so we can transition. Tell your neighbor, it's time to transition. Time to transition. Because if you don't, if you don't, you're going to live in a, level of, in a life of devastation, destruction, deception. These are some of the things that come out of those four. You're going to be deceptive, devastated, destructive, and then you're going to be, it's going to reinforce your passivity. It's going to distort your purpose. I don't want your purpose to be distorted. Right. I don't want you to walk in deception. Yes. And I've had so many people come to the church and say what I didn't say. Mm -hmm. But I want to be clear from this point on. Yeah. We have to get free from yeah. all of our religious tendencies yeah. mm -hmm. so that we won't be in prison. Some of it is in, imposed upon ourselves and some of it that as a leader we take responsible for. But from this point on, I'm going to show you first how the enemy has, what he's done. How many know the enemy has done some things too? Yeah. Yeah. And so Satan himself, you can take that down, Satan himself, his strategy is, and this is why religion, that's why we have tradition, denominationalism, and all of these factors in operation in the church, is Satan's strategy is to keep men in ignorance. Mm -hmm. If he cannot keep the light out of the world, he'll keep it out of your heart. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, I am the light of who? The church. The world. The world. We act like he's, that's what we act like, right? Yeah. Even the light we have, when he was speaking to them in Matthew 5, 14 through 16, he was trying to tell them, say, you got a light too? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, your light is on the bushel. It's not on the candlestick. What you, mean, what you, you know what he was telling them? You got something. You're legitimate, but it's not in alignment. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. If you put your light in the right position, he said, you'll be a city set on the hill. You'll be the light of the world. But that's what the enemy wants to get us. He wants us to be so inwardly. He wants to make sure that the light doesn't shine in your heart. He knows when the light dawns in your heart, when that day starts, shows up in your heart, all shadows have to flee. All of the remnant and residual of religion has to go. And that's what he wants to do. That's why he wants us to fight over certain things, over doctrines and teaching. That's why he wants to keep the church divided and denominated the lower levels of expression, as we said previously, right? Divide the whole. He wants to make sure that, that our light <coughs> become uh, isolated, like I said. And he wants us, our, us to make sure, even in this church, we have a light. This, this ministry has a light. Mm -hmm. We're not the only light in this city. Yes. Come on. Yes. That's right. But we have a light. Yes. We have something to offer, not just the world, but the church. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right? And so the enemy wants to keep us in ignorance. He wants to, and one of the ways he keeps you in ignorance and makes sure the light don't shine in your heart, he'll make you feel so bad, he'll have you looking for things that God never said. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the truth. Because he understands when the switch, light switch go up, you're going to be changed. Yes. Yes. Psalms 36 and 6 that in his light we should see light. In his light, we should see light. That's why we need him to be a light. We need him. 
to be a lamp. I know a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our bed. We need, <clears throat> and light in scriptures means understanding. I know we've heard scriptures that say that we're going to be, it talks about outer darkness. That's what's happening with the church. It ain't hell. Outer darkness is not hell. It's ignorance. It's ignorance. That's why he want to keep us ignorant. He don't want us to have revelation. He don't want us to have understanding. He don't want wisdom to be our portion. He wants us to keep going through the motion. He wants us to keep coming to the building, keep going to the building, keep coming to the building. He don't want the light to dawn on you. He wants you to stay bound by your cycles. Because that's a sign that light is not there. When you can keep repeating old patterns, that lets you know that you haven't, the light hasn't dawned on you yet. You have no understanding yet. When you have understanding, you do different. That's why I put that about tithing. Into the group. It's like, I understand it on tithing is jacked up. On finances is jacked up. We don't even know yet. Jacked up. Jacked up. You see how low the levels, you see the you see how low the amount of people give? Yeah. yeah. And we trying to figure out why we can't do nothing with the church. Because we got people in the church that won't do nothing. Yeah. And to me, <laughs> this house what we get, man. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. There is no way that there should be no reciprocation. Because of the quality. Of the information you get. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. This is not stuff that I got off a of podcast or I got from my favorite preacher teacher. Right. Mm -hmm. Stuff come from God. Yes. Yes. God gives you an opportunity to be free. <laughs> I was gonna say something. If you're single, make sure you find that husband that's a giver. Yes, sir. Nothing worse than having a husband that's stingy. I digress. I know they're gonna piss people off. But it's the truth. Yeah, but uh, Satan's strategy is to keep man in ignorance, to keep us ignorant of the truth. He know that Jesus said in this word that they that know the truth is gonna be made free, not set free, made free. But you have to continue in the word. If you continue in the word, continue doing it God's way. Because that's what it means. Have God's perspective as you continue in it. You're going to be blessed. But if you don't, if you discontinue in it and you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you always got. Yes, sir. Somewhere along the line, you got to say, okay, God, I'm going to do it your way. I know there's something burning in me. I know this ministry is my part. And I got a portion to play at this ministry. So I want to get the information that's necessary so I can have the understanding that's necessary. Yes, sir. Right? But the enemy wants to play games with our hearts because he knows if I get their hearts, I'm going to have their understanding. 